Crypto. Crypto never changes. Or does it? As a matter of fact, it does. Some things are fleeting, some remain with us longer, and some, well, have been there since day one. And one of them is the proof-of-work consensus algorithm, that I'm sure you've heard of a lot. But if you still don't know what it is, today is a really good time to catch up, especially knowing that the world of crypto is now at the divide. Some people are more old school and support proof of work, while others stand by the younger proof of stake that's often posed as a more eco-friendly algorithm. The crypto team has made a courageous decision to release a series of videos on these two algorithms, where we're gonna speak about how they work, what is the difference between them and their pros and cons. You'll learn about miners and why the crypto world can drastically change soon. You're watching the series Crypto in Two Words, where we explain in simple words how these things work. It's Kirill at the microphone and today you'll learn what proof of work is. Like I said, today's crypto community is divided into two large groups. One group says proof of work for the win, proof of stake sucks. The other replies with proof of work is killing our planet, we're not gonna take it anymore. <laughs> All in all, the debate is in full swing about which of these two consensus algorithms is better. And in order to understand this conflict, we have to answer at least two important questions. The first one is, why do you need to know all that anyway? And the second is, what on earth is that consensus thing? And only with these questions answered can we move further. Why do you need to know that? It's simple. There are dozens of blockchains and they must be somehow different from one another. Otherwise, what would be the point of having so many? And one of the most obvious things that separate them is the consensus algorithm they use. The better you know that difference, the more reasonable choice you make. The actual word consensus is of Latin origin. It even sounds like a magic spell out of a book about Harry Potter. Consensus Maximus and everyone agrees with everyone. Because this word means agreement and unanimity. Here's how it works with more conventional technology. Let's say there's a bank's database where the bank can one-sidedly block your account or change the balance if they want to. They can do it because they in fact control the whole database. They are the main bully in this school and nobody can stand in their way. But in the world of blockchain, the rules are entirely different. Actually, the more accurate definition of a blockchain is a distributed ledger, a self-governed ledger, which means that no one person can control or change it single-handedly. Instead, it gets controlled or changed by thousands of network users. Each of them has the same exact database and they all come to an agreement. Now this is what is called consensus. But here's the thing. How come all these thousands of people agree with one another? They don't know one another personally, live in different parts of the world, in different time zones, have different social status, different internet speed, and probably don't even like the same beer. How do they come to an agreement on what version of a blockchain should be the right one? Can't they just fake it somehow and trick everyone? Why can't you make the whole network believe that a wrong block is right and why can't you send one Bitcoin twice? It's all because of proof of work. And now I'm about to explain how it all works and you be so kind as to hit that like button for my effort. Well, it's all about the hash. And in order to understand what a hash is, you gotta read this Wikipedia article, run through a couple of threads on Harbor, watch an hour long YouTube video and say, screw that because you might not want to keep all that information in your head. So let's make it simple. This is what a hash of the word cryptus looks like. And this is what a hash of the word cryptus one looks like. Take a closer look and see how different they are, while the difference between the actual words is one digit. The thing is that a hash is basically a password for a block and there's no way it could be found given the specifics of encryption which if you want to understand them, you'll have to go through another couple of articles on Wikipedia. But in essence, all you need to know is that the only way to get the password is guess it. How, you might ask? Well, get this. Let's take a hash for a Cryptus 27. See? It begins with a zero. So we want a computer to find a hash for the word Cryptus plus a number, whose hash starts with a zero. 
The computer does a simple search through the database by going from Cryptus 1, Cryptus 2, Cryptus 3 and so on to Cryptus 27, whose hash, as it happens, starts with a zero. So the computer does some math, goes through 27 variants and the hash that it ends up finding will be the proof of the work that the computer has done. Proof of work. Basically, this is what miners do when they make blocks. But taking into account the fact that a computer can create millions of hashes a second, it's easy to imagine how quickly the right line would be found. So that makes a miner's task much more difficult and complicated. When a miner creates a new block, they are to provide the network with two hashes. One of them is a hash for all the transactions within the block, and the other proving that the miner has spent an enormous amount of energy on creating the block. And yes, by energy I mean actual freaking electricity that powers thousands of GPUs inside mining farms. So a miner's job is to provide a valid block of transactions, a hash for it, and also a number that would take the computer to the hash starting with 15 zeros. Awesome. Locating a hash with 15 zeros might take billions of guesses. It can take one computer a hundred years to do that. But a mining farm with its crazy computing power can do it in a matter of minutes. However, the expense of such fast processing is pretty high. It's bad enough that a mining farm turns the room into a sauna, but it also consumes an insane amount of energy. And all that is because it's disadvantageous for a miner to validate an incorrect block. He isn't getting any reward for doing that and also has to pay a costly electricity bill. And if a miner does have a malicious intent of integrating a dirty block into the network, despite all costs, other nodes having cross-checked the network data simply won't let him do it. Or her. Besides, proof of work solves the problem of double spending and the wrong block order. The thing is that every new block contains a hash of a previous block. It's exactly because of the inextricable link of each block with the previous ones that we can follow a blockchain's history down to the very first block. This means that if you try to replace a 5-year-old block, the hash of the whole chain will change as soon as you do it. And the difference will be as drastic as when changing just one digit in the example with the word Cryptus. So what's the conclusion here? There is a good reason why proof of work proved itself as a reliable consensus mechanism. It's as secure as it gets, since bending the network is just too damn expensive. It's resistant to centralization, because nobody can trust anybody within the network, and decisions are made in a decentralized manner, not by a person, but by a machine. Yes, there is a certain number of external problems, like high energy consumption and the rising outrage on the part of environmentalists. We will surely talk more about this in one of our next videos. And in the meantime, you can write something in the comments. It helps promote the channel, you know. And don't forget to check our telegram. It's full of nice perks. See you guys next time and goodbye.